Last map, invasion control. Final one, boys. Lock it in. Let's get it. Start on defense, obviously, because we were a higher seed. Kind of a standard break off for us. We would have two people go B side, then the last two people would play. Uh, this would be Brandon and AG mid tank and some sort of A credit over here, either pushing up into cafe or playing the standing spot super credit. We would literally call this the credit setup because AG would just play super safe on the side. Fortunately, do not lose or do not win the break. Lose every every kill basically. Brandon stays alive mid, which is good, and we kill Ken. Or sorry, we kill Skies pushing up towards the left side, which is massive because now we can actually kind of get ahead and and push towards this A side. That's what Ken's gonna do over here. Get a kill mid cut. Last guy alive is mid tank though. They're just winning trade battles. Our our last guy is on A, and they can just teamwork this. So off of that, we kind of just need to force B. I don't like necessarily wrapping to A here. I mean, we're getting free kills here, but more consistent thing is just to try and get the kill towards the right side here and then just go towards B, which I guess, I guess they end up doing anyway. Ant runs Caesar down over here. Ken somehow rips Sib off of the, the B control heady. Last guy alive. Back DVD, kill him. Now we can start making plays on this B side. And can stay alive. DVD, they just need to watch their front. But Dante, top blue, really big kill. No one's watching our mid cut anymore either. Because uh, Ken had to give it up. They flanked through the mid cut. And is now pushed towards blue. Oh, close. But close is not enough. So we're not really getting anything going here. I think after, you know, a really good map four, or sorry, map five, you go out 4-1. I think they were trying to just go a little bit too rogue and kind of had to settle in after this first round. Because not, not a great offense. I don't even think we got a tick for it, right? Yeah, no ticks. No tick offense. So I think I think we, we started off a little bit too antsy, trying to basically lock it in, but... Uh, again, yeah, you gotta have to stay focused. They're, they're still a good team. They're still playing for the win. If I almost said this is a good round to bring the team back down to earth and lock in again. I, I completely agree. Because that round was not good at all. But after that, after a zero tick offense, you're probably just like, okay, eight. I know we're excited, but everyone chill the fuck out right now. Look at this. Look at this by Kiz. He's just getting super pushy. He's going straight to blue. He's already inside blue. But the rest of his team is getting picked apart. We get a kill B side. We get a kill on the mid tank after pushing mid cut. And we get a kill cafe. Last guy alive is Kiz. We now know that he's behind us. We can easily trade for that. And already pushed up to the B tank. We can now refill middle. I like, I like him. You know, I like him trying to... Play for this mid cut, mid cut, but I, I think he he should stay on the on the tank and let number three pick it up for him. I think he's expecting him to hit quickly, more quickly through the courtyard. But he somehow still maintains, you know, pressure and stays alive for a little bit. Opens it up a little bit for AG. AG gets a two piece mid cut, but again, I, I think if if Ant just stays alive onto the B tank and then crosses to the construction uh, before they're able to get pressure and actually push him. So close, I think it's probably better. AG now going for spawn kills as well because he, he got those kills mid cut. He knows he has the timing for people trying to wrap from the, their spawn through uh, to, towards the courtyard. Fortunately, he doesn't get any kill though. The number six and number eight kind of teamwork him. Good, pit, good plays by Paco. Kids once again getting pushed up. Again, they're solo capping, trying to get pushed up, get kills on our base. But they're not, you know, capping quickly enough. Kizman is still getting pushed up. He's he's trying to go for even more spawn kills. We get those two kind of stabilized with our base. 
And now last guy live Caesar pushes out the treehouse. So they get off of all those kills, they get one tick. And this is where the solo capture can come back to haunt you if the kills don't flow. Sky's forced to jump off his zone. And he's getting tagged up and chased as well. Shotzi on the prowl. Shotzi. Kill the guy treehouse. A, a, a really nice kill by Brandy here on the guy Standy for the trade onto AG. And now we're once again back in a, a control position. I don't mind Brandon going DVD instead of mid-cut. You're kind of like baiting it out because based off of the information that you get with this uh, death over here, I forget who died. I guess it was number six. But Dante dies. He's probably calling, you know, this guy, you know, he's pushing mid-cut, pushing mid-cut because he sees Brandon get a kill standing spot. He's expecting him to pinch this way. Brandon kind of cuts back though and goes DVD instead. So this guy mid-cut isn't watching really anything. And now we can get pushed up towards the front side. Yeah, standy. We call this standy spot. That's why I call it standy. I said standy because we would just call this... That specific call out for us was standy spot. Because at the beginning of the game, he would just always use this corner. Uh, so it just stuck. So... Once again, again, if you're getting uh, pressure in this area as a defense and you're maintaining that pressure and you can't let them get pushed up, you're, you're winning the round. And for the tick game right now, subliners going to get the second one. That's a guarantee. They're going to try stacking this towards broken. An extra minute on the clock. We're just kind of playing off of exits. It's good coverage. Shots are still fighting from upstairs. It's a force free, but it's likely to be the B capture. That's that. A minute to go. We just chalk it up. We're, we, we figure ourselves like... Okay, we, we have two deaths over here. And, you know, unfortunately, we, we had to push it because they were double stacking it. We had to put some type of pressure. But Ant's like, I'm not going to die as well. I need to at least stay alive so that we can maintain, again, some sort of pressure on the side. And maybe you can get a kill off of exit while we're trying to push towards the left side. Really big win by Brandon here. Him winning this and not dying here gives us freedom to roam a s and d and possibly still you know push up towards the street he dies over here that means number seven has this route for free and they have a guy mid cut they can cut cut towards cafe uh that was a that was a really big kill you know he does get trade out with with the the car bomb but regardless it buys some time and it doesn't allow them to get as much pressure as they could have These are all big kills too. We know they're not coming through mid core because we see them. Now we're, we're playing for people on the right side. AG unfortunately doesn't win that one, but I like the play. Paco actually makes the play to jump up towards top blue. Ken reads him though. Really big kill. So he can't create chaos in our base. And it's now just playing inside DVD. Again, playing all of these exits towards the, the right side of the B, the B part because we know no one is coming towards the left with, with Brandon over here. So he, he's just helping our team out on the right side. And we can continue to just play for these right kills because Brennan is pushed up here. But once they get into blue, now this is where it gets a little bit sketchy. But what do you know? Look at the time. 25 seconds. It took them so long to get this B cap that they need to work around. Because, you know, Brennan gets another kill here. They, we know that they need to work around this way to get onto the point. Because we're, we're still staying alive towards Nero here. So this is just so hard for them. Look at what we're playing. Ant's playing the back base. We're playing one guy in the fire car watching this deep. Ken's towards Manny. We know that they're most likely blue. They're now climbing our gas, uh, you know, our gas ladder. And still playing for this back over here. But again, look at, you know, we, we even spawned a little bit closer than we probably should have. Spawning close. We can play for this mannequin kill. Brandy gets another, or, you know, at least is staying alive. I don't know if that's the same kill. Is that the same kill? No, he gets another kill on this guy, Top American. So him staying alive here just wraps up the round. There, there's no way for them to get on the point. Six seconds left. You know, only guy that can touch it is, is Caesar here. He's just playing Ring of Oh, actually, Dante does get on it. So my mistake. He gets on it with 0.1 seconds. I didn't think he had the time to. But regardless, we can just tack him out. Play teamwork. Trades off this. We know that one guy's going to be playing... Uh, the cross so if we are able to nade him out perfect and we win the round and that's what we do so good defense to at least uh you know, bring it back if we would have lost that defense we would have been down 0-2 so good defense
they only get one cap for it, so three ticks to zero at this point. So here we go with the guarantee B because we know we need to get B in order to get a possibility of defense, uh, you know, round five, if we were to go to round five. So that's why, that's why we go with, you know, guarantee B over here because we didn't get ticks on the first round. So everyone be broken, P2 tank, on point. We're just making sure we have everything. Number three is going to watch our deep pinch just in case they, they deep pinched. We're just going to make sure we're watching our mid cut, and that's what the guy on point is doing. That's what Ken's doing here. Look at number five, though. Caesar gets up in our base and underneath AG. So AG can't see him. But eventually he's going to pinch it, so AG does see him. But let's say like he stayed underneath here and just kept blocking the spawn or something. AG would never have seen him. What happens on point here? Oh, Kiz rips Ken off the P2 tank. And that allows for them to activate uh, towards DVD and mid cut because Ken doesn't have over them. So that was a big play by Kiz. And then Paco just runs out back DVD, gets a two piece because the guy on point was watching the mid cut. So that was a, that was a big Kismet kill on Ken. Paco tries to push into ice cream. That's, in my opinion, I don't know. I think that's a little bit of a scam. Maybe he's not expecting us to spawn that close. But again, you know, number one still, or number three could have gotten there. Number one spawns, spawns close. Maybe he's expecting us to spawn deeper. Number one spawn close. I think these other spawns are a little bit fugues with how close we spawn to. Like, all of us are spawning super close, so maybe he thought he had the timing for it. But, you know, number three could have gotten there, right? I would assume. So we spawn close. We get the kill on Paco. But this is a really good pinch by Dante. He sees nothing coming towards courtyard. Boom. Activate. Sees no one to spawn kill. Boom. Go around towards ice cream truck. Or, sorry. Ice cream truck. Ice cream wall. And you can get a, a possible two-piece here. Gets one. No two, though. Instant trade. So really good on our end. Because as long as we can maintain as many bodies as possible going to this B side, we're going to eventually overwhelm the reinforcements based on our response. They get one more kill. I like this, this Ken route. Ken wraps around, holds a mid-cut from here. He can hold, you know, number five accountable. Gets the kill on Caesar as well. Maintains pressure towards middle. Huge two-piece. You know, I was saying huge two-piece before. It wasn't really big. This is a huge two-piece because... By taking this route, he's denying anyone coming mid-cut. So if they wanted to pinch out again, he's covering it. If they're trying to pinch through mid-cut to help people on point, he's covering it. And also, you know, once he gets the kill, boom, right here. Number eight sees that they're going to have uh, some pressure towards middle because he's, he's you know, number five fi fighting number one. So number eight's going to help him out. But Ken reads the, the instant... Uh, help by Paco. Really big two piece. Now there's only one guy here broken. We can teamwork this and and finally cap this point because we needed those guaranteed ticks. So really, I mean, really good play by Ken. We capped the point. What do you know? One of our subs is getting super deep pushed up into into treehouse. So we're gonna push through treehouse now. A really big kills here because we've already capped the point. So. Instead of chalking it up, they die here, and it's it's it could be really detrimental because we're getting all of this pressure towards this blue side of the map. And not only does that happen, we also win the gunfight on number six here. So Ken, instead of pushing through, let's say mid cut, going this way, he knows he has to wrap back in case they've already possibly gone up to this Lamar Street, which they did. You know, that's what Dante's doing. He knows, obviously, that's a, a good play for a team to do. It's the same thing with, like, it's not the, the, as drastic as useless on Karachi because if you got pushed up useless, you would block the spawn so they would spawn deeper. You, you're not really going to spawn over here when A's up alone. So it was just a really good, good play because you're on a defensive side. You, you eliminate anyone basically wrapping going this way. So you know... In order for an offense to win, they have to go around this way and hit the point out that way. And you yourself, you can 
look this way, possibly get cross kills as they're crossing a point. If they come AS and D, you still have that as well. So it was just a really good idea to get pushed up far deep on this left side like this. So Ken wraps back, gets the kill on Sib. And now, instead of having someone pushed up here, they die for it, and now they would have to refill it if, if they wanted someone there. And Ant and AG are still getting pushed up blue with some kills. Unfortunately, Brandon dies to Paco here, but... We were trying to make some pressure here. Again, they, they spawned a little bit closer. They have more reinforcements to get there. The big thing here was, was the kill towards this A side because now we know we can push up towards Cafe for free, basically. Good stun by Kiz. Really good stun by, kill, by Kiz here. Clears back Cafe. He knows that, you know, Ken last live could possibly be there. And it's a, it's a big kill. And he, he, he reads him. But, what do you know? He pushes out. Ant's already getting pushed up himself. He's still weak from the, the Ken gunfight. So again, pressure, pressure. Making sure that, you know, if you're going to get a kill on us, you're going to be weak for it. And we're going to have someone else flying at you. So, Ant runs with a pistol, gets the trade. He, he dies to, to Caesar. But what do you know? Caesar's now in a gunfight with, with Brandon. Brandon's going to back him down. He still sees him there. And we actually do spawn A. I didn't even know this in, in the moment. I'm surprised. I'm surprised we even spawn A here. I'm guessing it, it must be some type of squad spawn element thing, but usually when B was already capped, you wouldn't spawn A like this. But look at these, these spawns. Look, I mean, maybe I was wrong before, but I forgot this even happened. This is how we're able to get there so quick on the reinforcements. Because, you know, Caesar kills Ant, but then Ant kills Caesar right back away because he's still AS and D. Kenny gets a kill mid-map. Brandon tries to get pushed up, but he gets killed by Dante. And, or sorry, AG actually turns around and, and reads Paco trying to flank our base this way too. So that's a big kill because now we have everyone accounted for in our base. We know that Dante is in cafe. Ken runs him. Boom. What happens when you get kills in this area? You can now cut, get to point, get to mannequin. They're now spawning deep back here. It's a very, very tough situation for the defense. So AG gets on point. Ken's going to have the cross to him. Gets Caesar weak for AG. He doesn't even need the kills because... Or he doesn't even need the shots because Kismet kills him with the team nade. Shotzi gets another kill on the cross here. And now you're just, you're just playing cross kills. You're stacking the point, playing kills Mannequin in the cross. Ken gets another one in Mannequin. Almost runs the other guy. They're now spawning deep blue. We're double stacking. Ant's now still pushed up in Mannequin. They have to clear him if they want to get to the point because he's going to take timings like this where he kills two in the back. Still double stacking. They're going to get onto the point. But we trade him right away. I don't think we cap this here, right? Or maybe we do. Oh, no, we don't. AG gets that kill, but they're still reinforcing from the back gas spawns. So it's it's still 9 to 5, though. So that's that's a bigger thing. We get almost the, the, the third tick on the A point, which, again, is, is big for Apostle round 5. But it's 52 seconds, and we're up by, you know, big four kills. So we just got to play together and trade. So that those two kills happen, and I'm like, oh, shit. This actually is not good we can we can for sure lose this round it's good that we got five ticks but this was definitely winnable you know seven to five isn't such a a big lead for an offensive team when especially when they've stabilized like this kismet's playing the super ratty corner top uh cafe and calls in his streak he's gonna try and win this offense here with this streak he doesn't get anything but he gets the info on where they're at so now we're pushed up towards A Street. You know, AG is going to try and make a play middle here. But he, again, he's going into a setup where he doesn't have help and they could possibly already be there. There's nothing really he could do in that scenario. It's just like, we kind of just have to go somewhere together. And, you know, if anything, maybe stay alive and, and maybe just stay alive, you know, back cafe or something. 
we do have 26 seconds to work with, so the time is ticking, but number two and number four can't really help you here. <laughs> now they're just watching the cross. It, it's basically lost for us now because number two and number four can't get to the point. They'd have to make some in, in crazy, incredible plays. You know, Ken dies here, and there, there's just not enough time to get to the point. It's a possibility because Ant is able to get around over here if he goes to the, the Caesar gunfight, but... Even if he won the Caesar gun fight, they would have still been crossing him from back mannequin, back cafe. So I guess over here, this is just a situation where if only, I don't know how weak Ken was able to get, you know, number five or number seven. I don't even know if he was able to get them any week, but them, them sliding onto the point and killing AG kind of screws it up. Uh, or if, you know, if Brandon didn't die here and they had teamwork this without him dying, we probably win it. But because we're solo capping at this point, and Ken's the only one to be able to watch the cross, he can only tag just, you know, a maximum amount of people. And he tries to tag Hydra, which he does to help him kill the first kill. But he gets number seven weak. He doesn't have the timing to get number se number uh, five Caesar weak for for AG, unfortunately. And AG needs to kill Caesar. So just unfortunate. You know, there was a possibility of a win, but but uh, it's not like we trolled the round. I, I wouldn't say it's. It was uh, there's a possibility of us winning. I I think once they get those kills and kind of stabilize, it's it, even if with with an, I mean maybe maybe we don't use the streak. Maybe we just try and do something together. I don't know. It's nine to five is still a pretty decent advantage, but when you're still trying to attack the point nine five like this, it's not really nine five. It's more like this is already eight five because this this guy's already dead. I think the only way that we possibly win the win the round here at this point, I think the only yeah the only way we possibly win the round at this point is if Ant gets a kill here and stays alive, and you know Kent and Brandon pushes up and then AG pushes up afterwards, but still got five ticks for the round, which is big for a round five possible defense. But a team very capable of winning from this position. But we would have to basically full stop them at B for this to happen, for them to, or for us to get defense, because we got full shutout. So B dom break out of them on the offense. They would love to do this, this, these, this B dom break where people get pushed up B dom. Um, sometimes it would be like an option towards the A side or an option towards the B side, but this feels like they're just trying to go super rogue, and we're working on it. Hydra stays alive for a pretty long time, but still gets killed, and we get uh, the kill on Kismet as well. Last guy alive towards, you know, middle is Caesar. He was playing the mid tank. Or was he playing the mid tank? Yeah, he was playing the mid tank. And he gets one kill, but gets traded out instantly. Last guy alive is Dante on the point, and there's nothing for him to do. He kind of just has to play broken and play his life, or play on point, yeah. But look what we're doing here. Again, Ken's already got pushed up towards the deep street. He can now try and spawn kill, at least make it hectic for them as they're trying to cross here. Um, and they, they have to worry about him on a possible pinch every, every single you know, second, basically. We play safe on point. AG gets a kill. Ant's filling out mid-cut, gets another kill on a, on a reinforcer. Last guy alive is Paco. Teamwork him, or I think he gets, yeah, he gets team shot, but we get the teamwork on him regardless from back DVD and mid cut. Ants last alive now here, and this is a, this is a big plays by, by Dante and, and Kiz. So this is them spawning a little bit closer again, once, like, like I was talking about before. Look at number five spawn. They spawn a little bit closer. They get those kills. They just have the faster reinforcements, so now they can get on point. This is a good kill by AG to get the kill on Kismet to get the pressure off of DVD. Uh, but again, we still need to kind of get them off the point. Our nades are somewhat hitting. Ken gets a kill as well, so this is a good job. And we're, we're going to be able to get them off the point, I believe. No? Oh, Caesar. Caesar does pop a 2 -y. Caesar pops a 2. Ant goes, tries to go mid-cut, but again, look at the route by, by Paco. Love this route. You know three guys are going to on point with no contestion. 
you wrap to the right side. First, you can either get spawns for once we cap B, or what you're mainly going to do is, is watch the mid-cut cross from a, a weird off angle. So Ant has trouble here. Nothing really you can do. Tries to finesse, dies for it. They teamwork, the guy's broken. Now they get on point. AG, or sorry, not AG, but Paco can now get pushed up through into Mannequin. This is a really quick play by him because he was, you know, mid-court before. He realizes the timing, the space that he has. Just instant pistol out, rushes towards Mannequin. AG even jiggles this. He jiggles it, stuns it, somehow dies. I thought it was a really good play, though, to, to jiggle it first, knowing that he could possibly have the timing. They get the trade regardless, though. We're going to give up this B cap. So that means we're going to have offense for round five regardless. But we still need to win, obviously, this defense first. But this doesn't look good at all. Look at where they're, they're at. Treehouse. Mid tank. They're already pushed up towards the A side. We need to get kills around Cafe to stabilize. Or else we're, we're just screwed. Brandon dies. Which isn't good. But look at the, the, the timing that Ken's able to get. He's able to get up to A, S, and D. Try and look for this kill. But again, Paco is already there. He's already pushed up our A Street. And that's why getting pushed up A Street was, was really important. Because if we were able to get through Cafe and get into A, S, and D, we wouldn't have to worry about this if we were pushed up A Street. But because we're not, Paco is able to push up himself. Caesar gets the information. He works off Caesar. Now they get all the kills towards our front side of point. And this is, I'm thinking, not... Not good things at this point. I'm thinking that we're probably going to uh, another game. Anwin's a, a big one on the front side. But again, they're already putting pressure everywhere in our base. We're spawning deep. One guy's taking this route. They have guys mannequin and cafe. One guy on point and one guy on our deep. That's a huge kill by Brandon first, but he's going to get traded out for this. I think that that first kill that Brandon's able to get basically helps our round so much. Because even though he gets traded out, they don't have enough time to like hit this guy out on point because we've spawned up and we can get these crosses. So they're just, it's just white time for them. They're trying to stay alive for these guys, number eight and number five, but they're just spawning super deep. And we know that they're uh, in the back here and we can just clear them out. So that's the problem with, uh, that's the problem with, you know, how we spawn. We spawn pretty deep, but we're still spawning into the crosses. And also the fact that like, you know, Brandy gets this kill and they can't get onto point because they can't cross to the point. And we have one guy left on the point. So that's why, you know, playing a little bit safer on the point. That's why the ant kill was huge because they still have to worry about this guy on, on A. But it's still, they're winning these, these trade battles. They're up 14 and 12. And they still have cafe control. They still have deep sheet control. So it's still not looking good regardless. We're kind of like turtled up trying to play defense right now. And it's not looking good. Look at these kills that happen here. Paco wins a one on, on AG. Ant's now focused towards him. While Ant's focused towards him, Caesar gets a free call on him. Paco ends up getting traded out, not getting into our gas because Ken looks at it. But look at all the space that they're working with now. But again, 26 seconds. Not much time to work with, but they do have a life lead and some really good map control. Caesar gets another one on Brandon too. But because of how these, these reinforcements are coming from us, Look at these reinforcements. We're just so quick to the trade because we, we spawn up and we're just back into it. But again, 7 to 11. It's still not a good life lead, but because they're spawning so deep and because they're not actually capping the point, we have some time to work with. This is absolutely, yeah, like Chance said, goal line defense, basically. They're still solo capping. Again, 5 to 10. It's not good at all. 
Still a good live lead. If any of these guys go down and they're still capping the point, it's huge. Like, Ken loses that gunfight, we probably lose the round. Because number seven has the cross for anyone, like number three, and they're still solo capping. It just goes to show you how much importance, like, some of these 1v1s are. And this is now this is doable. Because we won the one on point, they're not capping. The clock is doing, going down. All we need to do is watch the crosses. Similar to how, you know, we lost that, that offense in the round before. Just need to make sure they can't get on point. And then we're good. Like that. So we go to round five. We're going to have to win an offense, though. So it's a big task, especially on, on invasion. But, it, but it's doable. If we figured... A big thing for us going into champs was that... A lot of times when we would lose offenses, we wouldn't even get the B cap. So we were like, we were hard focusing. Okay, getting the B cap first, because if we get the B cap, we're one of the best teams at getting, uh, you know, offensive wins after capping B. But if we don't cap B or if we don't guarantee it, we're not winning those rounds. So we figured, let's cred up, let's play guarantee B and just cap this point and, and take it from there. Because that's the only way we're really going to win this, this offense round five. That's a big kill by Paco here on, uh, you know, AG watching the pinch. I would like AG to play maybe a little bit more credit, uh, like on this side. So it's a little bit different off, off angle rather than just a straight up gunfight. But that's just, I mean, Paco just does a really good job there. Ants already pushed up into the blue. What do you know? Invasion control. He's pushed up into blue. Creating chaos. We're not capping the point, but we're... We're trying to cut off everything towards the point for our spawners to get, you know, onto the point. And he's getting all this information. Brandon unfortunately dies to it, but, but Ken can work off this. He gets to kill on Paco. Ant does see another one. We, we finally get on point. I think it was, yeah, AG was watching the full deep pinch, but now he's going to watch the mid cut pinch. So we just adjust off of the kills. So it's not like we're, you know, focused on, you know, getting kills, but it's more so... Cut everything off, we'll work off of it, and then we'll, we'll, we'll work on the point. Because we have so much to work off, like, so much map control that we're, we're working with right now. Because of Ant's positioning. Here he goes. On the zone. That's three. Totally so we get the kills, and then we get on point, we're double stacking. Now he's for the spawn kill. Ant's now playing spawn kills on Paco there. AG gets pushed up through DVD, plays this guy on the mid-tank. Now they have no one near the point. So we can fully solo cap this with good confidence that we're going to, you know, cap the point because we still have AG towards middle and still needs to die towards blue. And we also have Brandon already getting pushed up for a possible uh, transition to A. And I mean, Brandon somehow got through towards A. Look at this timing that he gets with, with Paco. I think I talked about this in another video before, but... Paco needs to pick up the left. He's going to pick up the left, but not until he gets to AS and D. So this little timing that, that Brandon gets, he, he's he moved on to the A point. And now he can be a distraction. They see, oh, what the fuck? They're capping A. He gets one kill. This other guy has to play for him. Doesn't win it. But again, they, he's brought attention towards him so that we can start to fully cap the B point and we're up six lives. So it's just a distraction. Now, again, because... Brandon was able to transition seamlessly earlier and already gets up to the A point. That means none of them are already pushed up here. We can already get pushed up towards our, their deep street. They're not even cafe yet, not even ASD yet. So we're already having a good transition uh, to begin with. Here's the situation any first blood is good. We're up 25 to 18. We, we have our deep street. We already are like pushed up somewhat towards Mannequin and Cafe. If we get any sort of first blood here, we can start making moves towards the point and, and create some chaos. That's what Ant's doing here. He's already Mannequin. He's going to try and get pushed up, work off of people's information that he's seeing uh, that's, you know, that's working front Cafe or at the front point. Team works with Brandon here. He can now get pushed up into their base. Brandon can get on point. He can play any kills towards the back gas. Kismet does kill him though, unfortunately. But... 
Brandon is on point. We're at least going to get the first take. AG's trying to help him out, but they're just going to get overrun. I think you can make, an, uh, make a case for Ant uh, to, to go straight to point and stack with him. Maybe he was afraid that this guy spawning up gas was, would have had the cross to the point if he would have taken this timing. So he's just trying to win the 1v1 first, but I don't mind if he stacks here either. I think he was just afraid that he, he wouldn't have had a route to the point and would have just turned his back to them. So Brandon's getting tacked out. He's just getting he's just gonna get overrun here. But again, it doesn't really matter too much. Like he he's gonna get overrun, but we still have AS and D control. We still have Deep Street. We have an eight live lead. We just need to play together trades around cafe, around mannequin. If we can get pushed up and get a, a timing mannequin, perfect. That's what Ken does here. He's gonna try and play and he kills gas plat. He sees Paco here. Huge kill because it's Paco once again. So because he gets the kill, now he can flank around as well. And on this other side, Ant wins a gunfight towards Front Cafe, while also AG wins um, a gunfight on one of the guys towards the backside of the point. Ken gets a two-piece on the other guy that kills uh, AG. So here, I think we won. I'm just, I, get, I say, you know, stack, 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 because I'm thinking 21-11, we got the three down, we're double stacking, we got trophies on point. So we're not going to get Nate off point like that. But it's just, uh, you know, Brandon's holding the cross as well. I'm like, how, how do we not win this first off? But it's because, you know, Dante takes this route to kill Brandon. So no one has the cross. And then once, you know, Brandon dies, these guys, number five and eight can crunch onto the point and Dante can crunch on. Or when I say crunch, I'm just saying like, like hit from both sides. But he can hit from this other side without AG seeing him. And they just uh, they get back onto the point. So 17 to 9, not so much of a big deal. But if allowing them to get up to the deep street and allowing them cafe and AS and D control at this point just sucks. But you just got to play trades, play fast, play trades, play together at this point. It's unfortunate because, you know, if you lose this round after a being in that situation uh you might never live it down and look at look at this right over here look at paco playing the super deep cubby over here to make sure no one pushes the right side so i'm just like at this point we're, you know we're dying it's 14 and 8 now we have a whole minute to work with to get one take so i'm just like everyone literally just me and damer are just like just literally go together just wolf pack this shit AG gets the kill on the right side on Paco, which is huge. You know, Kiz gets the kill on Ant midcourt, but it's instantly traded by Brandon because, you know, both of them had went towards uh, this right side, him and AG. So the trade midcourt happens. They get they get uh, killed over towards the right side. So we know our right, the right side is basically free. Cafe and back Nero here. So we, we know there's a possibility of them to have pushed up Nero. And I don't even know if Ken relays this to him, but Ant just throws a nade and somehow kills Caesar with, with a nade here. And that's the biggest kill. Because once that happens, we know that our back is clear. We, we're, we're cool with it. We, everyone's in front of us. And now we can just attack the point together. We don't have to worry about, you know, the possibility of this guy flanking back around and, and watching the cross this way. And in case we were trying to cut, we'd have to worry about him. So huge kill to get the, the nade kill on Caesar because that just... Gives us clear, clear of mind. Brandon runs Kiz by just sliding to the point. Last guy that could even be in contestion is Dante. He's going to get one kill, and I believe it's... Uh, yeah, I believe it's Ken. But Ant's going to be able to turn around right for that kill. AG in that moment has already pushed towards gas. Gets one and gets the second one on another spawner, Paco. Stack the point. Game over. GG's. Champs winners. An offensive invasion control round to win it all so said it before but proud of the boys obviously they played lights out at this event and that was all of the the breakdowns from our matches so hope you guys enjoyed thank you guys for watching all of these honestly like whether it was youtube twitch watching the streams 
Uh, we'll figure out what we, what else we'll do over this off season. Uh, I got some uh, some ideas, maybe some Optic Dynasty, BO3 vods, uh, some other breakdowns if you guys want 